Good morning. It's uh, is it Friday, September? Friday, September eighteenth, two thousand twenty. It's three thirty-five a.m. I'm on my way to our. Uh, we're meeting up. We're gonna do a two two hour run. Two hour, like uh, two hour and five minute run. And uh, yeah, should be nice. Uh, this morning I had wrote a note. <clears throat> And some of you may know I, I do that often. I do that anytime, especially when I'm inspired. It's not something that I do as a routine or a habit. It's something that I do when I feel um, a need to express something that may uh, help my family. And I leave it on the counter and I'll post it sometimes, whatnot. And... Uh, <clears throat> And um, it was talking about a test. Now, uh, yesterday I had went to uh, Chevy to get an oil change. I went to go get an oil change and normal routine. It had come up on that time and I like going there because they got snacks. And... Uh, not only do they have snacks, but uh, it gives me a chance where I can't get in the car. I can't go anywhere. I just can sit there and just kind of do my business. So I got that taken care of. And then uh, yesterday, I'm sorry, the day before yesterday, I got that taken care of. And then yesterday, I decided to go with my wife to take uh, the kids to the doctor, you know, just getting regular, normal routine checkup. Everything's fine with them. So I got a little, she got a little, uh, uh, shot and she handled that like a champ. And she said, Oh, that hurt. <laughs> you know, it wasn't crying. It wasn't this big old demonstrative, uh, 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 outward, outward show of emotions. Oh, that hurt. And uh, you know, I gave her a little mask with smiley faces on it. Put a little band-aid on with some smiley faces on it. And, you know, it's all good. You know, business as usual. So we jump on the freeway, and I had told them, um, you know, one of the gyms I go to has a kids center, and it has jump house, and it has basketball court has everything that they could want it's got video games and uh you know it's kind of a way to get them out and I, I take them with me to that if i'm going to that gym i try to make a specific reason um they have a sauna it's great for recovery and uh so i'll do that and so i, I had plans to take them to the gym and let them go run around i asked my wife do you want to go she said yeah she could just walk on the treadmill and um so we're jumping on the freeway, leaving the doctor's office, and I'm playing on my phone. Well, not playing. I was actually uh, trying to get a signature on the contract. And um, within a split second of me looking down at my phone and looking back up, there was a huge, huge ladder on the 202 South Mountain Freeway. Huge ladder. Not... Not one you want to take on head on. It was huge. And next to us, before we had got up to the ladder, was this big diesel. Huge. Huge. Nothing you want to take head on. I had seen that I had passed the diesel up before I went to look down at my phone and, and get the signature sent off. But I wasn't quite sure in proximity to where I was to where the diesel was on my right hand passenger side so when I see this ladder in the middle of the road my instinct is telling me I can't go over this ladder I, I can't it's probably going to tear up the tires it's going to tear up something underneath it's going to be a problem so my instinct said swerve right and then correct. I ride bikes. I ride motorcycles. I drive fast cars. I get it. I get it. Just react. We 
we got past the ladder. Scared the hell out of everybody, especially Ricky. But what scared me most was I made a gut instinct reaction, but I didn't take into accountability how close that semi truck was to me on my right hand side, the same side that my wife was sitting on and my daughter in the back seat. Had I misjudged that, I'm not sure what the conversation would have looked like today. And it was that close. Because I, I didn't... I didn't account for it. So... I apologized to my wife. I said, she didn't get on me. She didn't say anything. She didn't say, oh, why are you looking at your phone? What are you doing? She's saying, wow, who left that ladder in the road? And I say, hey, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been on my phone. I should have been paying attention. Um, I wasn't even sure how far behind me that diesel was. And come to find out it wasn't. I must have missed the diesel by inches and missed the ladder by inches. And literally banked in and made a quick one before anything traumatic could have happened. And I apologize and say, I'm sorry, I put my phone down and drive it back, get to the house. I need to grab my clothes because I'm, I'm gonna go to the gym and get them ready. Pull into the driveway and get stuff out and my son walks into the garage I hadn't pulled in yet walks into the garage sees a big big puddle looks like water he says what is this I assumed it was condensation from the um, I assumed it was condensation from the uh, the AC unit from the car sitting in the garage running condensation drips off of it and I said touch it and he put his foot in it and it was sticky and it was greasy. It was a puddle of motor, motor oil. And when I looked, there was a trail of it going all the way out to the driveway. And when I looked under my car, there was a puddle coming down out of the car. There's oil pouring out of my car. And from the looks of it, it started inside the garage. So who knows how long I've been driving with this puddle, with this missing oil. And I start thinking, I just had an oil change done. What's the chances they didn't tighten that filter on. They didn't put a, a valve or a gasket on correctly. And so now I'm, I'm calculating all this and I get on the phone and I, I, I need to go get this workout in. I got this long run today. I got multiple appointments going on. I got a lot of stuff going on. So I get on the phone, I find the invoice, the lady put her number on there, call her. It's all right, we're sorry, we'll uh, get a tow truck out there and we'll get it back to the dealership. I said, well, I need something. I, 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 I need my car back. I said, well, we have a loaner vehicle, which is what I'm in right now. And we'll give you the loaner vehicle, no problem. And uh, she says, let me call you right back. Calls me right back. Well, the, the, the diesel's not going to be there. I know you got to be somewhere. The, the, the tow truck's not going to be there for a minute. I know you got to be somewhere. We're going to be closed by the time they get there. So we'll just order you an Uber and have your family and you brought down to the dealership. We'll have a car ready for you. Don't worry about it. You're good to go. test
you're gonna encounter them. You're gonna encounter them. When you're when you're racing towards the finish line, and I've always experienced this in a race, a marathon, just as you get ready to break that plane is when you start feeling your worst cramps. It's when you start feeling your worst pain. And I've learned to take that as a sign that I'm getting ready to finish. And it used to take the wind out of me and it would take the energy out of me and it would take everything I had in me to keep going. But now I see it as a sign that I'm getting ready to finish and a sign that I need to go and finish strong. Endure, suffer the pain, push through, and know that God wouldn't give you nothing you can't handle. And he'll make a way out of no way. And so, in just this short span of time between the diesel and the oil was maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes. It wasn't a couple hours. It was just affliction after affliction. But when you're focused on the task at hand, you're not overly concerned. You're not overly concerned with what's coming at you. Because what's coming at you is trying to distract you. And if you let it, you lose. But if you don't let it, you get to move on to the next level. See, no test, no testimony. God wants a testimony. God wants to hear how you came out of it and through the grace of God and God alone because he does want the credit. Look at me now. Look at me now. See, you have to learn how to see the signs. You have to know how to read the barometric pressure. You have to know how to read the sensors. You have to know how to know what's coming at you and why it's coming at you. So that you can know, am I close? Or do I still got a ways to go? The cramps let me know I'm close. The problems let me know I'm close. But close isn't finishing. Finishing is if you can get past the test that comes with being close to your vision. And once you master that, Everything opens up to you. But you can't fail the test. Forsake the testimony. And think that you should get the prize. It doesn't work that way.